Welcome to The Outlet, an OTG production. What's up, NBA fans? Welcome to another edition of The Outlet. I'm Nick Fay. With me, as always, Parth. Hey, Nick. What's going on? What's up, Parth? I'm getting ready for this podcast. Got some exciting stuff to talk about today. Yeah, let's get into it, man. Yep. So first off, we're going to talk about our favorite player to watch in the NBA right now. For me, it's got to be it's got to be Russell Westbrook, and it's he's so explosive. You you have to take the good with the bad when it comes to him. It might not always be a uh, pretty picture, but you know it's going to be fun to watch. So it it it's it's Westbrook for me by far. I know Curry's up there too. But Curry just doesn't have the explosion. He, his game's a little bit different, and I really enjoy watching Westbrook explode to the rim and dunk on Andre Drummond or whoever he's going to dunk on next. It's, uh, it's a really fun watch. Yeah, Westbrook is an explosion. I'd say at the end of last season, it would be Westbrook 100%. He's starting to get back to that right now with Kevin Durant out. But I'm going with Steph Curry just because – you never know when you're watching Steph. He can just explode and just store, score in threes out of nowhere. So I like watching him. He's exciting right now. I don't think he'll keep maybe keep this pace all year, but I'm going to enjoy it while I can. I think the majority of the public would agree with you on that. Uh, he's been he's been incredible to start the year. I just think Westbrook, he's more he gives you more on the offensive rebounds. Him going for offensive rebounds and flying out of nowhere and grabbing them is uh, is crazy to watch. I just can't I just I don't have any more adjectives to uh add to his game. It yeah. might not always be good, but it'll always be exciting. It's definitely close though because I enjoy watching Westbrook a lot too because like you said, he's so explosive. One step in the paint and he's up there for a dunk slamming on seven footers. But we're gonna get into something a little bit different this week. We're gonna do a little fact or fiction. So we're gonna bounce uh hot topics across to each other. So first off, is Andre Drummond the best center in the NBA? That's fiction. It's it's DeMarcus Cousins. They had a matchup this past week, and Cousins thoroughly outplayed him. Uh, yeah. Drummond is good. Uh, he's a double double machine, twenty twenty threat every night. But it's I gotta go with Cousins. I'm gonna go with you on that as well because Cousins definitely showed us a lot this week. He had a crazy game against the Nets, the Kings. I mean, against the Pistons. So Cousins for me. Drummond just needs to keep adding to his game if he wants to get to the top. Correct. All right, Nick. Is Steph the best player in the NBA? Fiction. Steph is playing at the highest level right now, but I don't think he's the best player in the NBA. I'm still going with LeBron James. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I think LeBron and Durant are up there as the top two, but the gap is closing with a Westbrook, Curry, um, and a couple of others who are – really trying to get into that elite, elite tier. And Curry's Curry's definitely the MVP uh, to start the season. But I still think I, th- I still think because of the way the Warriors are structured, it's it's such a perfect balance that he helps the Warriors be good uh, just as much as the Warriors have helped him be incredible. Yeah, that, the system definitely works for him for sure. All right, another one for you. Is Kristaps Porzingis going to be the best player out of this draft class? That's a fiction. It looks like uh, Carl Anthony Towns is going to end up being the best player, and I think I think Porzingis is amazing though. His his he's been super entertaining too. If he just got a if he just got some better passes, uh, he would have a game winner in Very his true. Uh, in his bank. So I, I'm going with Towns, but I think Porzingis might be a solid number two out of this class. Yeah, um, I didn't want to agree with you on all these, but I'm going to go fiction as well because I think Towns has definitely showed a lot. He showed a lot of potential. He's already rebounding at a high rate. He's already had a couple, I think, 20 and 10 games, and I've been impressed by his defense. But Porzingis has been great, especially those putback slams. I don't think no anybody really expected him to be this aggressive early on, and he's really showed a lot. All right, Nick, is Kobe hurting D'Angelo Russell? Uh, This is honestly a tough one, and I'm going to go fiction because I think having somebody yet, Kobe's minutes might be hurting the team a little bit, but just having his uh, personality around and his work work ethic is definitely helping the team and helping a young player like Russell. 
Yeah, I agree with you uh, there too. I think D'Angelo Russell has to earn his minutes and he'll, I know people are complaining on Twitter about him not being able to develop, to develop if he's not in the fourth quarter with Kobe Bryant playing those minutes. But I think at, at an early age in the NBA, you develop more through practice. And that's where I think the, I th- that's where I think Kobe mentoring uh, D'Angelo will really help him improve his game. And then eventually towards the end of the year, similar to what Jordan Clarkson was able to do last year, D'Angelo Russell will be a lot better. Yeah, Clarkson definitely picked up at the end of last season. All right, another one for you. Do the Cavs still own the East? I'm going to say that's a fact. They've looked really good so far, and they have a top 15, maybe top 10 player coming back in December. I don't think anyone is getting in their way in the regular season. In the playoffs, this team is a little injury prone. Uh, Kyrie Irving, as we all know, is injury prone. So, I mean, anything can happen once you get into the dance. But as of right now, the regular season, they own it. Yeah, that's definitely a fact for me as well. The one thing about the Cavs that always that's exciting is they had just have like another gear. They'll be losing all game, and then in the fourth quarter, they just all of a sudden turn it up. And like you said, they're getting back Kyrie Irving, so and they'll get back Shumpert as well. A nice little pieces for them to get even better. Right. One thing. One thing to watch for though is LeBron's back. Back issues are never a good thing. It, it really took away Tracy McGrady's uh, career when he dealt with his back and knee issues. So if LeBron's back is hurting. He's probably going to compensate and uh, something else, another uh, joint is probably going to take a brunt of the punishment, trying to make up for what his back isn't able to take. Exactly. And your back kind of just like locks everything up if it really starts to get bad. So you definitely want LeBron to keep an eye on that. All right, Nick, will the Warriors win more than 72 games and be the all-time winningest team for a season? Uh, fiction. I, I don't think the Warriors are going to do it. I think too many things went good for them last year, and they didn't really have any injuries. I know Bogut's been banged up, but I'm saying, like, if Curry has to miss games, even Clay Thompson may miss an extended stretch, or even Draymond Green or Harrison Barnes, I think it could hurt them. Yeah, I agree with you there. I don't think they'll uh, win more than the 95-96 Chicago Bulls. Just because, like you said, it was so perfect. It was a magical season last year. And I know it's been magical so far this year, but Clay's Clay's uh, currently dealing with back stiffness, and that's never a good thing. Like we just talked about with LeBron and back issues. So exactly. I think I think with Thompson going going down, this team is really talented throughout, and people like Harrison Barnes can pick up the slack. But I think doing more than what you're capable of will end up leading to injuries to other players. So I don't think it's going to be a coasting sort of season for the Warriors like it's been so far. Yeah, uh, definitely. All right. Are the Rockets uh, – the Rockets aren't going to make the playoffs. This is tough. Uh, I'm going to go with fiction. I have to I have to put my chips on the table with James Harden. I feel like he, he hasn't been good so far. The, South, the Rockets in general haven't been good. They're middle of the pack offensively. They're terrible defensively. And I remember on uh, – on Reddit, when we did the Houston Rockets preview, we got called out for because we said this team wasn't that good on defense. Well, yeah, they're not that good on defense, <laughs> which I had to tell you. Uh, but I, I believe in James Harden. I think he's going to regain, regain his form. And even if they don't, even if they're not a top six team like we thought they would be, I think they're good enough to make the playoffs. Yeah, they're too talented not to make the playoffs. I think James Harden will eventually get it going. He's just really struggled. I was watching a segment of one of his games earlier this week, and he missed like three layups and an air ball to three all in like two minutes. So he's definitely not playing like himself. He needs to get back going. Agreed. All right, Nick. Will Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns, will they be a better duo than Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant? That's a very tough one. I'm going to go fiction. I think Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook are really, really good. And it'll take a lot for Wiggins and Towns to get up there because you could argue that Kevin Durant and Westbrook are two of the top five players in the NBA. I don't think that's an argument. I think that's I think that's proven that those two are definitely within the top five. I don't I, I agree with you there. I think it's fiction. I think Towns has the chance to be really, really special, uh, similar to an Anthony Davis. 
Wiggins, I I like Wiggins a lot. I think he could be an MVP in the league, but I think I like Towns a little bit more than Wiggins. I don't. I think Towns could be on that Durant and uh, Westbrook level. I think Wiggins might be just a slight tier below. I could definitely see that because just the impact Towns is already having. Wiggins, you can see, just needs to keep adding to his game so he can get to that level because the potential is definitely there. Wiggins is no doubt unbelievable, though. When he's aggressive and driving to the paint, he's definitely fun to watch. He, like, floats in the air. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, he's he's put a lot of people on posters. He had a really, really nice one against Atlanta. I don't know if it was this past week or the, the previous week, but YouTube it. You'll see it. It's, it's nice. Yeah, I think we actually have that on the OTG Basketball Vine, so check it out. But uh, let's talk about FanDuel. I don't have a ton of players for you guys this week that I really love, but – some guys maybe just keep an eye on would be like Jeff Green. He had a big game. Uh, the coach was happy about it. He praised him afterwards. So maybe you could see some more minutes. And Green's under 4,000. So that's not a bad play at all if he's actually playing. Speaking of Jeff Green, I read earlier, I think it was on Sunday, yesterday, that he is now going to be moved into the starting lineup in favor of Courtney Lee. So Courtney, Courtney Lee moves to the bench. Jeff Green starting. I don't know how long that'll uh, continue, but. Take advantage of it while he's there. Exactly. Take advantage. That's one thing to always take advantage of. Somebody gets moved in the starting lineup, you're going to see a minutes boost or say someone's injured for a week or two, that guy's going to step up. Definitely keep an eye on injuries. Another guy, uh, Terrence Jones, he returned from injury. His first game wasn't very good, but his last two games he put up 37 fantasy points in each one. So he's not a bad price either. So keep an eye on him. Then one guy I haven't personally played, but I've been reading a few things about is a Jared Solinger starting to break out a little bit. So keep an eye on him. And that about wraps it up for FanDuel. And now my personal favorite segment, the uh, games of the week. So last week we made picks and uh, yeah, I kicked your ass, Nick. I was, yeah. I was six and no, and I think you were three, three and three. Yeah. All right. Wait, so did I wait? Did I pick the Hornets? You did pick the Hornets. Did, well, the Hornets won, right? Correct. They uh, blew... They were kicking Portland's ass. Oh no! Yep, I'm three and three. Yep. Yep, you're three and three. Stay in your place, my man. I am. Uh, yeah, let me gloat here with that six and zero record. Early season dominance. Long season ahead. Yep, long season ahead. All right, let's get into uh, games of the week for November sixteenth through the twenty second. First game tonight, Monday, November sixteenth, eight p.m. It's on League Pass. Celtics at the Rockets. Who you got? I'm gonna go with the Rockets. I just think they're going to get out of their funk eventually. They've been playing too bad. So I think tonight they might just get out of it. Sorry, Boston. After what Boston did to OKC yesterday, uh, shutting them down in the second half, I think this defense is for real. And I'm going to go with Boston pulling the upset. Well, I don't even know if it's an upset, yeah, but they're on, they're, upset. On, they're on the road. So we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick Boston. Yeah, they, if it's on the road there, then. All, All right. right. All right, let's move on to the second game. Minnesota at Orlando, and that's on Wednesday, November 18th at 7 on League Pass. Who you got? Honestly, this is a tough one. Uh, I wish I knew if Ricky Rubio was going to play. Because if Rubio plays, I'm going to go with the Timberwolves, but I'm not sure, so I'm going with Orlando. All right, I'm going to agree with you there. I'm going to go with Orlando at home. And these guys are so much fun to watch on League Pass. So are the Timberwolves. And, yeah, yeah this, this should be a really good game. It should be a lot of fun, for sure. All right, the marquee matchup of the week, Game 3. It's on Thursday, November 19th at 10.30 on TNT. Finally, TNT makes an appearance on my games of the week. Golden I'm State with, at the Clippers. I'm going to go with Golden State. I think they're just going to get up for this game, and they'll probably win. The Clippers haven't really impressed me a lot, especially after they lost to the Mavericks last week. So I'm hoping that Chris Paul is back to close to 100% by uh, game time on Thursday. So I'm going to say the Clippers finally put a blemish on the Golden State Warriors record uh, and get their first uh, and give them their first loss. So I'm going with the Clippers. Fourth game on Friday, November 20th at 8 p.m. on League Pass, the New York Knicks go into Chesapeake Energy Arena and face the Oklahoma City Thunder. 
I'm going to go with uh, OKC. I don't see anybody on the Knicks containing Westbrook. And I feel like Kevin Durant will be back for this game. Uh, yeah, he, said he's, he said he's feeling a lot better, so I'm going to go with OKC as well. All right, the fifth game, the Atlanta Hawks at the Cleveland Cavaliers on Saturday, November 21st, 7.30 on League Pass. Who you got? This is another tough one, honestly. Uh, I'm going to go with the Cavs because they just lost already to the Bucks over this weekend. So I think LeBron called out his team. They should be playing better this week. Yeah, I'm going to say – I know I talk about this on the uh, on the actual article, but I think Al Horford's three-point shot – is going to make a difference in terms of spacing this time around, um, and they'll win at the Q. So I'm going with the Atlanta Hawks. Okay. And then the final game, Phoenix Suns at the New Orleans Pelicans, Sunday, November 22nd, 6 p.m. on League Pass. Yeah, this is a tough one too because you think the Pelicans would win if they're actually playing how they're supposed to, but they're not, so – uh but I'm still going to go with the Pelicans because I think they'll probably start to win games eventually. All right. I think the Pelicans stink, and I'm going to go with the Suns. I really like the way Eric Bledsoe is playing. He's, Phoenix is back to uh, what they were two years ago in terms of being uh, fun to watch. One thing about Eric Bledsoe, I really like him in FanDuel tonight. He plays the Lakers, so I would go with him. Monday night, Eric Bledsoe, put him in your lineup. All right, just a quick recap of who we picked. You have the Rockets. Yep. Orlando beating Minnesota. Golden State beating the Clippers. OKC beating the Knicks. Cleveland beating the Hawks. And the Pelicans beating the Suns. And I have Boston, Orlando, the Clippers, the Thunder, the Hawks, and the Suns. So we uh, disagree on a lot of these. We only agree on we agree one. on only two of them. Okay. So depending on how this goes, you might you might take the lead in uh, the overall rankings. Uh, yeah, very true. So enjoy it while you can. But that wraps it up for today. Thank you guys for.